This Sunday, we will find out who will be dancing this March. All the college hoops teams have fought all season, and for some, the final journey is about to begin. Just as the teams are pursuit of glory, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving their new customers a shot at royalty with 40 to 1 odds on any college basketball game. Bet just $5 on any college basketball team to win their game, and if they win, DraftKings will pay out $200 in free bets. DraftKings Sportsbook has nearly endless ways to get in on the action, from same-day parlays to future betting. Feel the sweat with DraftKings now. Everyone can enter a free pool with $100,000 in prizes. Answer any questions like which team will make the tournament and which conference will have the most teams in the tournament. And then follow along Sunday as it unfolds to track your results. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code SMOKE. Throw down just $5 on the college basketball game of your choice and get $200 in free bets if your team of choice wins. That's code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. The only shooter that I never had problems with in was the Jordan 3s and 4s. What about the protégés? As soon as you see them, before you buy them, go to the gasoline cans and the lawnmowers and go pour gas all on the protégé shoes and burn them some bitch. Y'all thought you were sweet with your little <laughs> shoe deal until you crossed someone over and your whole soul fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to What's Burning. Jack, what's good? Cool, my brother. How you doing out there? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Had a busy weekend with the boys. Uh, we won the Made Hoops Championship, so I lost my voice from cussing out so many refs, but it was a nice little weekend, man. Nice little weekend. Well, let's get to it, man. The Heat had a heavy week last week, but prevailed through it all. They knocked down the Bulls, the Nets, and ended the Sixers' five-game winning streak. Oluwadipo is due to return soon. Are the Miami Heat the biggest threat to come out of the East right now, in your opinion, Jack? I wouldn't say biggest, but I just know they're a contender. And the reason why is because they play defense. They compete every night on both ends of the ball. They don't do no non, no unnecessary switching. They get over screens. They, they stick to their game plan and they, and they stick to it to a T, especially on the defensive event, even when they have guys out. My worry is when Oladipo comes back, how will he affect that team? You got great guys like Tyler Hero playing well, uh, Kyle, Kyle Lowry. You know, Jimmy's going to be what, what he's going to be to that team. And uh, at Bounds playing well, I don't know what his role is actually going to be, you know, with, with Hero being that guy that's coming off the bench and giving points and sometimes starting. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see if he can bring uh, that Oladipo style of play that he had in Indiana to the, to Miami. That will be dope, and that would definitely help them in the playoffs. But it's de they're definitely a contender for, for the way they play the game game on both ends of the ball yeah I think this is a, a blue collar team that it's really as crazy as it sounds being one in the east has kind of flown under the radar um Oladipo I think it's a good problem for Spolster to have I mean they just got a lot of talent he's got to figure out how to use them I think Tyler Hero is on his way to winning his first sixth man of the year I like the depth they added obviously with Kyle Lowry and PJ Tucker championship experience uh Bam's mm -hmm. playing at a high level you know what Jimmy's going to give you um, Duncan Robinson can shoot the shit out of the ball. And Spolster is one of the best coaches in the league. So, again, this team, I think why they don't get recognized more is because they're not flashy. Again, they're blue collar. Like you said, they play defense. They compete for 48 minutes. So they're definitely going to be in the mix when it's all said and done. So we'll see if they're able to uh, represent the East. Next, the hottest team in the Eastern Conference, the Boston Celtics, have gone 14-2 and over their last 16 games. Jason Tatum was in a shootout with Kevin Durant this weekend. JT dropped 54. It's his fourth 50-point game, tiring, uh, tying Sir Lawrence Larry Bird. How far can Jason Tatum take these Celtics, in your opinion, Jack? I mean, he's playing well, and everybody's playing their role. They're letting him be the star. Uh, if he can have big games like this, the sky's the limit for that team. But, you know, that's not realistic for him to have 50 every night, especially in the playoffs when teams take away a lot of the things you uh, you do well. But uh, with, with Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn just is, looks terrible on defense. J Jason Tatum just did everything he wanted to do on offense um, last night with, with uh, against Brooklyn. Got layups, got wide open threes on on switches. He just played with the big man and got any shot he wanted. Brooklyn just looked bad on defense. But Jason Tatum and and and, and Boston Celtics are looking real good right now. Shout out to Ime Udoka for uh, doing a great job coaching these guys, getting them back uh, in the winning field over there, bringing Jalen Brown in, not just throwing him in the fire, coming off an injury, but letting him play minutes and bringing him back slow to keep him healthy for the playoffs. Great job by them. 
Yeah, this this has been the hottest team in the league, and uh, yeah, definitely shout out to Ime Udoka for kind of helping this team uh, turn this team around. But this team's always been a mystery. They experienced a lot of success early on. Uh, I think it was Tatum's rookie year or first year where they went to the Eastern Finals against LeBron. I think Tatum is the clear one A on this team. Although Jalen Brown is very talented, I think he's the B, and that's not a bad thing. If this team could somehow get it together again, they're mm-hmm. I don't know if they're missing anything. Um, they haven't had success. You know, they've tried to bring scoring point guards in. Obviously, that wasn't the answer uh, because they have such scoring dominant wings. Um, but I love Jason Tatum. He's one of my favorite players. You know, he's obviously one of the top five. Was he just turned 23, 24? Under 25 players in the game. Uh, there's no holes in his game. And he plays defense. So it'll be exciting to see down the stretch. You know, the analytics people are really high on Boston uh, representing the East. So it's going to be an interesting next two or three weeks as we wind down the season. The Mavs have gone 4-0 of late. Luka looks like he's in shape. He's catching dunk tips, dunking on people. You already know he's a, he's a walking bucket. Can the Mavs play spoiler in the playoffs, Jack? Of course. When you got a guy like Luka Doncic, of course. Uh, he can take over games. He can win games. He can make plays for others to win games. He can do it all. And uh, like we, like you say, he's in shape now. Um, he, he's looking like an MVP candidate that we, that we said he was last year. But um, I love Luka, man. I love the way he's leading this team. Uh, I love the way he's starting to believe in J-Kid and, uh, and the team is starting to buy in and come together uh, with, with losing KP. Uh, I think this is a better team now. They play harder. And uh, we'll see if they can spoil somebody's uh, playoff season. I mean, to think Luka's only 23 and, you know, Porzingis was supposed to be his uh, his Robin, uh, could never stay healthy enough to be on the court. I really like uh, mm-hmm. the point guard, the point guard, the backup point, Jalen Brunson. I think Jalen Brunson is going to is going to get a lot yes. of money uh, in the offseason. And again, Luka is tremendous. And I think if they really had a, a true Robin, this team could really make a run. But uh, I think with only one star, it's going to be really hard for them to advance. Uh, but they can definitely play a, spur- a first round spoil uh against someone because we've all seen when Luca, you know, Luca's pushed teams to the wire um single-handedly before in the playoffs, so I see it no different this year and he's in shape. Keep in mind, man, he's only 23 years old. The league is in really good hands once this next wave of superstars uh retire. Jack, next up the Memphis Grizzlies who are neck and neck with the Golden State Warriors for that two spot in the West. Perk is real big on this team. He's been talking big on this team for the last two or three months. Jaws just been incredible. What do you think about this Memphis team? Are they for real, Jack? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can say Ja Moran is for real, but <laughs> I can't say the team is for real. And I can't say and, and, and I and I can't say the coach is for real. Because when it comes down to the playoffs, when they get to the playoffs, they're going to take John Morant out the game, completely away. Double team, all that high flying and all that shit, it's not going to work. They're going to take all that shit away. And somebody else is going to have to step up and have some big games. I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to be able to shut Ja down, but somebody else is going to have to step up and have some big games for them. And I don't know who's going to have that. They got a great group of young kids that can shoot, that can make plays, and, and they play hard. But – I haven't seen the coach in that position yet, and I haven't seen these young guys in that position yet. I believe in Jai. I just don't believe in the team. Yeah, this is a very young, exciting team, and I think you hit it on the head. You can get away with all this kind of stuff in the regular season. Ja, they'll be able to slow him down. They won't be able to stop him. So you know what Ja's going to give you. But again, similar to Luka, who's going to be that second consistent 20-plus a guy every single night in the playoffs that you need to advance, you know, you definitely need that second 20 point a game. Is it, is it going to be Jaron Jackson? Uh, we don't know. He's been up and down, very talented, young, power forward. But Jaw's been incredible. And um, like I said, he's going to be judged from here on out what he's able to do in the postseason. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, that they're sitting in that second seed, a second round battle, possibly with Golden State in the making would be incredible. So it'll be exciting to see this new young team in uncharted territory in the playoffs, if they happen to play a, a veteran, experienced team like Golden State in that second round uh, mm-hmm. to see what happens. So is Ja the next face of the league or in the next group of names you feel like will be in the next face of the uh, face of the league after this wave of, you know, LeBron, uh, KD, Steph, after those guys are gone? Is Ja the front runner for that? Well, I, I, I think even so. Matt, why Steph and KD's around, even when Braun stepped down, because for the simple fact that he's exciting. 
The young kids mm-hmm. watch him. He 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 has the 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 flair, the the style, the swag. He had, he has all that that the culture embraces today and that the culture is today. And he go out there and get the job done. He's a high flyer. He's a more athletic out in Iverson. Mm-hmm. Even like I say, he he reminds us a lot of Dave, um of uh Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose. But um yeah, yeah. Derrick Rose. But um. This kid is special, man, and I, I just hope he have a successful um, pl- playoff season so he can shut a lot of people up. Mark my words, when Nike decides to give Ja his own shoe, it'll be the number one selling shoe in the league. I guarantee it. Guarantee yes, it. Sir. All the kids love Ja. So once Nike goes ahead and make that shit, once they press go on that play, he'll have the number one shoe in basketball. LeBron dropped 56 against the Warriors. What was more important the Lakers actually won. Just another gem in his crown, Jack, or can this team possibly pull some shit together and, and make a strong finish to the season and maybe make some noise in the playoffs? I mean, I, I, I still think they can make some noise. There's definitely a gem in his crown, but I don't think it was big as people think it is. For for me, it was big because it continues to show LeBron's greatness at the age he's at. Uh, mm-hmm. That he still mm-hmm. loves 37. the game, take care of himself, and 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 he's still a goat. You know what I mean? He's still a goat. So that that says one thing to me. But for the team, it didn't say much because if you think LeBron finna keep getting fifty six for y'all to win, <laughs> y'all done lost y'all goddamn mind. You know what I mean? Y'all y'all got another thing coming. And I don't remember getting scored fifty on by nobody my whole career. So I don't know what that feels like. You know, to be in that type <laughs> of zone. But but um. Braun, Braun is doing his part, and I'm glad Magic and other people are going after everybody else on the team because y'all putting a lot of pressure on Braun. Braun, he's continuing to do his part. When is the rest of the team going to step up and do their part? Yeah, this is crazy. Obviously, he's shown throughout this nasty season for the Lakers that he still can play at a very high level, uh, very high level. One of only four guys to drop 50 uh, after turning 37. He's been absolutely incredible. Uh, Russ dropped 20 ending uh, what I think a 10-game streak without him touching 20. I just always tell people, Jack, and you you were in and out with the Clippers, but particularly with the Lakers, there's so much more to the game than basketball. You know, I think Russ is one of the most mentally strong mm-hmm. players this league has possibly ever seen. I was actually talking to his agent at the UCLA game, SC game the other day. Um, but L.A. will break anybody. You know what I mean? And I'm not even saying Russ is broke or his agent said he's broke, but I'm just saying from the outside looking in, all this chatter is getting to him. And again, Russ has been one of the most mentally tough players I've ever seen, this this game's ever seen. But coming home to L.A., being in your hometown, and I don't think anyone predicted it it, it, it was going to be this ugly. You know, everything is not on Russ. To me, that's been a real issue because they haven't consistently got LeBron, A.D., and Russ on the court for a long stretch of time. So that, Russ doesn't really know who the fuck to be. You know, am I am I old Russell Westbrook? Am I an, uh, an aging Russell Westbrook that's supposed to try to find his footing between two other superstars? It's been LeBron out and A.D. out, and Russ is incredible. It's been A.D. and Russ, and Russ has been good. It's been A.D. – it's been Braun and Russ, and then Russ is trying to find his footing. So – it's been really interesting because they haven't got their key three guys on the court for a significant amount of time for Russ to really find who he's going to be. You know, this guy's been a ball dominant guard his entire career. Now they're asking him to be as dominant playing off the ball. And that's never been his forte. So I agree with you, Jack. I think if this team can squeak in the playoffs, whether it be playing game or not, if they're in that a spot at some point or even seven, if they get hot, they can beat anyone in the league because of their, this is an older team that's built for the playoffs. Now, you definitely can't turn shit on and off, but you're always going to have a great chance if you have a healthy LeBron and a healthy Anthony Davis and then a Russell Westbrook that, you know, at some point is going to give you something special. Jack, next up on the radar presented to you by DraftKings, let's take a look at the Coach of the Year odds. Uh, we got Monty Williams as a big favorite, minus 350. J.B. Biggerstaff doing a great job at Cleveland, plus 350. Uh, Eric Spolster, one of my favorite coaches, plus 650. Uh, Taylor Jenkins, the guy you're kind of questioning still over in Memphis at plus 650. Uh, Billy Donovan, plus 1,200, rounded out by Steve Kerr, plus 2,500. In your opinion, you have a favorite in this group? Yeah, I ain't going to lie, man. Last year I wanted, I think Monty deserved it, man. I really, I really think he deserved it, and he's doing a great job again this year. And and I, I think last year was his year. I can't give it to him this year, and I was really pulling for Billy Donovan. But I got to go with that young staff, man. I got to go with JB, man. I think JB 
he gonna pull it off, man, because this is the team that really came from shit to sugar, right? They was in the dungeon since LeBron left. Now they in the playoffs. They playing shit. well. They got all stars on their team and all this type of bit, all this type of business going on. So I gotta go with that big, that bigger staff, man. JB boy. Jack, this is a little bit off talk of it. Let's 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 look into the future and hypothetically, if you're Cleveland and you've built something this special post LeBron, obviously LeBron is going to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest player ever. Would you want LeBron to come back to that young team, knowing that it's kind of been hard yes, for him to yes, blend yes, and work? Yes, in? Okay, yes, talk to me yes, about that. Yes, yes, yes. Before I, I don't even want you to finish the question. Hell yeah! So you 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 would you would you would take a year or two with LeBron at the end? Well, for well for me, I would because a young roster can can use that leadership. But then that gives you a great chance of getting Bronny. So it's a lot of it's, it's more than just bringing Bron there. Mm. You know, definitely he gonna bring that bring the championship feel there and bring, bring that experience and the way he's playing at this age. No telling how he's gonna be playing two years from now. And uh, you get Bronny out there. You know, it's just it's just so many pluses of having Bron on your organization. So it's always a yes for me. Yeah, not mad at that. I just pay for Bronny, man. Just, just, just imagine how tough and how much pressure is going to be on that kid to, to, to be. <laughs> I mean, can you live up to your dad's status? I mean, that, that that's incredible, man. So I hope that he's able to keep his head on straight and uh, continue to, you know, elevate his game and, and put himself in a position to, you know, be one of the next greats in the league. Next up, fan questions. I, I Janika. I Janika 82. Oh, that's what I Janika. it is. I Jane, AKA. Say, uh, or is it Janika? I Jane, AKA 1982. I don't know if it's I Jane because AKA I don't look, 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 look at the thumbs up. I think I Jane would be probably like a, a, a more pastier thumb up. That has a little bit of color to it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Janika. That's why I said, you know, yeah, yeah, you Janica. know, you know, I'm ghetto, I'm slum, <laughs> yeah. so I, order, hey, I automatically think Janika. What's up, Janika? <laughs> hey, hey, my little freak of Janika. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Well, I, I'm gonna go with I Janika, 80, uh, 1982. <laughs> with it being Women's History Month, how do you feel about the NBA? Can it best honor women this month uh, moving forward? More hiring. Uh, love the show. So what can the NBA do to honor women uh, during Women's History Month? What's up, Nika? What's going down, Nika? But uh, this, this first crazy. off, they can just pay the women what they deserve. Okay, Women's Month, I get that. We do this women. I think this Women's Month shit is just like Black History. We Women's Month shouldn't be one month, and Black History shouldn't be no one month. OK, we should celebrate women all oh, year yeah, round, yeah. just like we should celebrate black history all year round. OK, point blank. And the, and, and the best example, uh, the, the best thing for the, all of them to do, if they, what they if they want to really celebrate Women's Month, make sure that the uh, women all get paid equal pay so they won't have to go through what Brittany Ground are going through right now. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, we'll probably we'll touch on Brittany at the end. Good call. Next fan question, Soul Poet 75. How hard it is to stay engaged with positivity in seasons when either losing a lot of, a lot of games or you in knowing that there will no be, be no postseason? What becomes the motivation after that, knowing you're not going to the playoffs? Can't wait to start smoking weed and get on the beach. That's how we used to look at it, right? I, although I made the playoffs a lot. Uh, I've been on some teams that, that – uh you know, we, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And you just want to continue to play hard because you never know. If a contract is up, if you're on a one-year deal, you never know who's watching. But if you're locked into a team and they suck and you don't know you're not going to the playoffs, you just start at this time, you're, you, you know, you're planning your vacations. You want to finish strong, stay healthy, and I'll, I'll catch you next year. Honestly. If it's just one season and we had, we just had some a low, yeah, but if this team, but if this team not going, if, if this team not going in a winning direction, period, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get up out of here, player. I'm gone. Let me know what y'all got going on. I'm gonna let y'all know where I'm trying to go. I'm not trying to be a part of no losing organization ever. <laughs> I'm not tanking. I'm not doing none of that. Yeah, so it depends on tough. what the situation is. The King Jose 23. What team has been the bigger disappointment? The Nets big three of KD, Kyrie, and Harden, or the Lakers big three of Braun, AD, and Russ? I got to go with the Lakers, bro, for the simple fact that they've been together all year. They ain't really had no turmoil. Yeah, they deal with some injury with AD, but they've be basically been together. They have an identity there. They have a, uh, a core to their team, right? They have guys that have been there all season. 
Brooklyn, Kyrie's been out. James didn't want to be there. KD's been hurt. Like, they've been all over the place, and they ain't had a solid identity or a team yet this season. The Lakers have, so my biggest disappointment in the Lakers is the Lakers, man. I'm disappointed in the Russ. I'm disappointed in how the team how the team has really handled the, uh, Russ and, and his lows, not giving him the respect he's deserved and trying to blame everything on him. I, I don't like the way AD came into this season with his body, man. He wasn't physically prepared to go back-to-back champions. If you think about the KD, Kyrie, and Harden experiment, in two years they only played, what, 16, 18 games together, which is fucking crazy. And then, like you said, this year, Harden played when he wanted to. KD carried a lot of low till he got hurt. And then Kyrie kind of came back at the end um, through his vaccination status. So they've that whole Brooklyn thing has just been an evolving door of craziness. The Lakers, on the other hand, have, have been hit with injury. But... Um, again, like I said earlier, I don't think anyone predicted that this, this Russ experiment would, would, uh, you know, work out this way because you got to think you let DeMar tell it. DeMar thought he was going to the Lakers. You know what I mean? And you see what kind of season he's having. Mm-hmm. He's probably top five in the MVP voting, uh, with this, with the season he's having over in Chicago. So imagine, you know, if, if that could have happened. So, you know, a lot of hood could have, should have, would have, uh, but definitely I'd have to say, you know, the most disappointing situation. I, I, I think to be honest with you, any situation is going to be kind of unfair for Braun because Braun is always going to be, if it's great, it's great. If it's bad, it's, it's going to be a Braun situation. So I definitely think, uh, you know, the Lakers are probably the more, disappointing team uh this season and shan tribe nine what's both of y'all's favorite hoop and shoe of all time oh favorite hoop and shoe i mean i was pretty much in adidas my whole career and they don't really have too much to brag about over there so i'm gonna sit this question out jack what's yours <laughs> <laughs> the jordan threes and fours i played in the jordan threes and fours a lot that was my favorite shoe comfortable i broke both of my feet so the only shoe that, that i never had problems with in was the jordan threes and fours what about the protégés by Al Harrington? I was just about to say, Matt, if they ever go to a store <laughs> and they see the protégés on the aisle, as soon as you see them, before you buy them, go to the uh, aisle where they have the uh, gasoline cans and the lawnmowers and go pour gas all on the protégé shoes and burn them some bitches. <laughs> they can catch them bitches in the Walmart. Remember that they're connected by like the little plastic uh, on the on the shoe rack with 150 pair of shoes. And bitches is probably seven dollars on there. <laughs> hey Matt, they relocated the proteges next to the Raymond noodles. <laughs> Man, shit. <laughs> buy hey, buy a case of ramen noodles and, and get the proteges for free. <laughs> Hey, y'all thought you, hey, well, real, hey, real quick though, y'all thought you was sweet with your little shoe deal before you actually had to wear them in the game though. Y'all had, y'all had some extra air, air in your chest during that season though, uh, before you actually had to wear them bitches on the court. <laughs> Until you crossed someone over and your whole soul fell off. <laughs> you had to wear them shits with a spat. Remember in the NFL, they used to spat where they would tape around the cleat. That's how you had to wear the protege so the soul didn't fall off. <coughs> All right, next up, Snowy Flows. Which team from this season would you like to put the We Believe team up against a seven, in a seven-game series? I would like uh, the Warriors now. I mm. want to go up against them. Okay. I, w- I want to go against Memphis. I like that Memphis team. They play hard. They're young. You want to, you want to get dunked uh, on got by a bunch Ja? Of dogs. No, you know, ja, I'm not letting Ja take off on me. I'm gonna grab him out the air. We don't. We don't, yeah, we don't play those dunk games. <laughs> <clears throat> the Forgotten Seasons is back this week with a look at the 2015 Clippers. Man, did we blow it that year? I uh, had a chance to go to the Western Finals. We let Josh Smith take over once James Harden was on the bench. Ugly season. One of the most underachieving teams I've ever played on. Definitely should have been a championship, at least playing for championships. And uh, we are never able to get over that hump. You can find the Forgotten Seasons on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. This week, March 10th, make sure you check out one of the greatest boxers of all time, Roy Jones Jr. Enjoy the teaser. You just told us all the greats and what they had. What would you say about yourself? I took all of that in packaging. That's mm-hmm. how I can taste so good. I took all that in <laughs> packaging. Bro. I took all that in packaging. Mm-hmm. If you take 12 greats and you take what makes them great. I'm taking all that. And you put all that in one person. Roy Jones. I cannot be great. You got to learn how to take what's happening now 
and how you elevate that. Applied. That's what makes you better. That's yeah. what makes you great. If you take a great, I mean, uh, Chocolatito, he followed the great, late great Alexis Alexis Aguil, mm -hmm. copied Alexis Aguil stuff, and probably a little bit more condition, a little more acrobatics with it, and look at him, he became great. Mm -hmm. 106 to 112 pounder. 106 pounder became great because he followed what Alexis Aguil did. And then he got one of the dopest too. names in boxing. Chocolatito. Chocolatito. <laughs> Chocolatito. <laughs> so it's like, you have to take the greatness mm -hmm. and figure out how you take that. The greatness of today, how you add to it and make that the greatness of tomorrow. And that's what I did. I had Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran, Muhammad Ali, Salvador Sanchez, and the list, I had a quite, I had a, about a dozen that I used to watch. And I used to watch them to see what made them different. Because whatever made them different, mm -hmm. I gotta have that. That's the only quality I want. What makes them different? Hagler was the consistency. With for Benitez was the defense. Tommy Hearns with the right hand. Ed Mustafa Muhammad was the left hook to the body, left liver shot. I got something from some of all of them, but I took what made them them. I snatched all those characteristics and tried to put them in my game. So that when you look at me, you see all that oh, one, and that's how it became pound for pound. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Who else you know gonna throw a 30 punch combination? Roy Jones. Shiri <laughs> Leonard could, Roy Jones. Muhammad Ali could, Roy Jones. You said a 30 punch combination. combination. I get tired of thinking about that. <laughs> But that's what the crowd want to see. Mm -hmm. what, I, I why, love the smoke and watch that. Well, Muhammad Ali did it. Well, Muhammad Ali, when, when Shui Lennon did it, everybody started going crazy. Yeah, when yeah. Muhammad Ali did it, they go crazy. So you gotta, you have to give mm -hmm. the people their money worth if they're mm -hmm. gonna pay talk, attention talk to you. To if mm -hmm. you're not, then you're just another boxer. Closing thoughts. Kevin Garnett will have his jersey retired uh, March 13th following the game versus the Mavericks. Uh, any memories playing Kevin in his, uh, his, his amazing career? Yeah, one time when I was in Golden State, he tried to guard me, and I crossed the shit out of him and laid him on the glass one time. <laughs> nah, KG, KG's a goat, no, man. Not with them protégés on. Could you imagine if K? It's crazy to even think. I mean, we don't have to go too far, but imagine if KG came to our team like we thought he was coming. That shit would have been crazy. Man, it would have been a blessing for us. You know, KG's a Hall of Famer, man, one of the best power forwards that ever played the game. We could have had his passion, his energy, and his talent on our team. Uh, Utah mm. didn't have a chance. Yeah, would have been trouble. Uh, congratulations to Big Ticket, man. Happy for him. And, you know, he's part of the Showtime family now, so we always got to show him love. Uh, next up, man, Brittany Griner is in an unfortunate situation over in Russia. She was found with a, a vape pen and a cartridge. Uh, I think she's still sitting down, man, so we're sending prayers out to her and her family. And we hope for, uh, man, her release and, and safe travels back to the States. Boogie, our guy Boogie, a resurgence. Happy for Denver. Mike Malone, he, he really, he, I remember he told me he always liked, really, really liked Mike Malone. Denver's giving him another chance. This past Friday, he dropped 31 in the, uh, win over the Rockets. The Nuggets are 12 and 1 when Boogie plays. Crazy ass stat. With Michael Porter Jr. and hopefully Jamal Murray coming back. Uh, is, is Denver a scary matchup in the playoffs? Yes, they are, because now I can say they officially have a bully on the team. They have an enforcer. The bully, they have real. somebody that can take the pressure off Joker. You know what I mean? Take the pressure off Joker and protect him and, and be the bad guy at times when needed. So, yes, I like Bookie there. You see he dropping 31 points so he still can get buckets and still can play. Uh, you got two of probably the best passing big men we've seen in the NBA in a long time on the same team. So, I like to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Happy for him. Man. I'm just happy to get he, he gets another chance, man. It's been well documented the crazy shit he's been through, man. And for him to get an opportunity and, and do what he loves, I love to see it. I was going to say uh, see you're trying to be just now. Oh, uh, see, that's why <laughs> Nate was here. You guys are fucking slick. Yeah, bro. Hey, Feliz I was wondering why Nate was here today. It's because he brought me a goddamn cake. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. Boy. Feliz cumpleaños a ti. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños a ti. <laughs> Mi hombre, yeah, mi carnal, Appreciate Pedro, yeah. Luis Cubianos, hey, happy birthday, hey, bro. They've been hiding this shit over here. They've both been over here smiling that's the whole a, time. I didn't know what was up. But yeah, man, 42 laps around. And, and that's a cushion. cake. Like they keep getting faster, man. I don't like it. I'm excited, but I got to go out of town right now. So hopefully I'll, it'll be, be straight when I get back in town tomorrow, man. Appreciate y'all, man. 42. I'm getting old. I don't like it because I love it. But, uh, man, appreciate the family. Appreciate y'all, man. Why don't you smash the cake and in your face for your fans? No, nah, I'll, I'll pass.
Respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the cake in my own face, huh? The fuck I look like. Hey, man, you can catch What's Burning every week on Showtime Basketball YouTube. And on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Show Basketball, man. Peace. See y'all next week. What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> You're all in danger. So what's our next move? Talk to an expert. There's certain rules to surviving. George's motive is always connected to the past. Sid, do you have a gun? I'm Sidney Prescott. Of course I have a gun. Scream. I'll be right back. <laughs> He's dead. Rated R.